Welcome to the Gay Buddhist Forum, where teachers from all schools of Buddhism offer their perspectives on the Dharma and its application in modern times, especially for LGBTQI audiences. These talks are offered freely to the world and made possible by appreciative listeners. If you would like to support our efforts to share the Dharma with underserved audiences, please visit gaybuddhist.org. There you can donate, find a list of upcoming speakers, or enjoy many hundreds of these recorded talks dating back to 1996. Uh, and I think it was eight years or ten years in monastic practice, and then Sunim went into the mountains and uh, practiced alone for many years, living off the land. Uh, he came back uh, into town and then returned again to the mountains with a Taoist master and uh, learned Tenchen breathing, which is Taoist. Uh, and uh, actually in China, Taoism and Buddhism sort of served each other. In a sense. So Sunim has been in the United States now for several years. He um, has students in Seattle and here in the Bay Area. He's abbot at the uh, Six Patriarch Zen Center in uh, Berkeley, which offers a daily uh, schedule and uh, is available for all of you to go and visit. Uh, their Dharma talk schedule happens on Saturday. Uh, Jia Luang uh, is our translator. She was an ordained Buddhist nun for many years. Um, and both uh, her and Sunim worked uh, for a period of time under the same Zen teacher in Korea. So, thank you for coming. Um, most monks also, if they um, misunderstand that teaching, they also ignore their body. Individually, each of us has the Buddha, and the Buddha appears via form. So it appears through our body. But it's true that the body itself is not the Buddha, because uh, the form is not the Buddha. But the Buddha is expressed through form. Uh, when we talk about form um, and saying that uh, truth is not the form itself, this is just a way of explaining that truth can be expressed through form. But if we have not awoken and we try to understand this intellectually, uh, we can understand the teaching um, to mean that we should ignore form. Um, so when we realize that um, this body is not a truth, the body itself is not the Buddha, then we may think that we can just um, not think about the body or just feed it whatever we want to or treat it however we want to and not worry about it. If we awaken to the truth of the Buddha, uh, then we will see that the form has no root. We have this physical body, but it has no root. But this body exists. Most people have attachment to their body. And as long as they have that attachment, it really seems as though the body exists. 
Even if you awaken, you still have this body. But if you awaken, then you realize that this body is not real. But yet we still have it. If we take a walk on a sunny day, our body will cast a shadow. When you see the shadow, if you reach out to try and touch it or to grasp hold of it, you will see that you can't do that. From the point of view of truth, our body is something that doesn't exist. But if we are attached to the body, it seems as though it does exist. If we awaken, then we can tell the difference between the real body and the shadow. And according to how the real body moves, the shadow will also move the same way. And according to how that nature within us moves, our body will also follow along and move the same way. In the Diamond Sutra, it says that the real Buddha is not form. The real Buddha is also not something that is empty. And yet, it is also not something that exists. So it is miraculous. So it is not something that exists, and yet it is not something that doesn't exist. So we make a mistake if we become attached to the existence of it. But we also make a mistake if we become attached to the idea of its non-existence. But ordinary people become attached to the existence and to the non-existence. This is the mysterious principle of Buddhism. And usually in Buddhism and spiritual practice, we talk about emptiness. But this emptiness is not the kind of emptiness that we would normally understand intellectually. That kind of emptiness is not completely empty. We have the ability to recognize um, that emptiness is not real emptiness. And if we awaken to that, then that is a correct awakening. <clears throat> and when we have that awakening, then we will see that this body of ours is empty. In truth, the body is empty. From moment to moment, our blood is circulating. And our cells are changing. Even though you can't actually see it, our fingernails are always growing. All of our cells are always changing. But if we look at our thumbnail, we can't see it growing. And yet if we look again in a month, we will see that it has grown. So without a doubt, even though if we look at it now, it appears completely fixed and stationary, um, in truth, we know that it is growing. But the growth itself is not visible. Because it is empty. Because it is empty. 
So if we look at our body correctly, it is something that is is not visible. What we see as visible is through our attachment. So what is it that is actually called the body? From moment to moment it is changing. So if we say it is this particular thing, the moment we say that it has changed. The second hand on this watch is constantly moving. It was here, but instantly it's there. The sun came up this morning, and now it's almost noon. But the sun moves uh, in a way that you can't see its movement. You can't see the movement. And yet it is moving. This is why there is morning, noon, and evening. High school times, university times, adult times, old age times, So our body is also changing as we go through the years and stages of our life. So our body, even though it seems like it's not changing, yet it is changing. It's very obvious. So there is nothing that remains stationary. But our thinking is not like that. We like to think that our body exists. And that is precisely attachment. So what can we do to have non-attachment? Because I don't have attachment of a watch. <laughs> but to have that attitude is like an intellectual effort at detachment. But through that kind of effort, we cannot get beyond our suffering. When we can have the awareness that for mo- in Moment to moment, this body is changing. Through that kind of awareness, we cultivate detachment. It's through our attachment that suffering appears. But if our attachment collapses, then so will our suffering. <laughs> One of the Buddha's teachings is the Four Noble Truths. Um, things appear through attachment. But if the attachment disappears or is demolished, then we can enter nirvana. This is not just theory. But this truth is here in this moment uh, uh, in our own body. So don't try to uh, approach it intellectually. It's a matter of being aware. So this body that we know of right now as our own uh, is something that we know through incorrect attachment. Because it is something that never remains the, sta- the same, that is constantly changing. We can take one second. Uh, we can take one second and divide it a thousand times. We can see the passing of one second on the watch. But if you divide one second by a thousand, then you can't see each of those thousands. In the same way, um, our body is changing. The sun is changing. 
our mind is changing. 모든 것이 변하기 때문에 고통도 변하지 않을 수가 없다. Because there is nothing that doesn't change, even our suffering can't help but change. Because suffering is something that has appeared because of attachment. But even the root of our attachment is changing right now. And we experience suffering because we try to take something that is constantly changing and believe that it's not going to change. If we can clearly realize that principle of change, we don't need to hold on to any kind of form. Then we don't need to hold on to any kind of form, and therefore we can see the Buddha. The Buddha is our awakened nature. And our awakened nature never remains the same from moment to moment. It is always functioning. If we try to grasp it, we can't grasp it. If we try to see it, we can't see it. If we try to hear it, we can't hear it. We can't figure it out through our thinking. If we can realize that and let go of it, then truth will appear. And when truth is revealed, we will see that form is empty. But that doesn't mean that form doesn't exist. It exists, but there is no mind there. So there is no attachment. Therefore, we can be alert. And our five senses will all be alert. And even as we hear, we do not hear. Even as we see, we do not see. Even as we walk, we do not walk. Even as we sit, we do not sit. Even as we speak, we are not speaking. Even though we may be silent, it is not silence. It may be empty, but it's not emptiness. What is called the Buddha never stays in one place. So all words become cut off. All that remains is awareness. And that awareness can see through our eyes and hear through our ears. There isn't anything obstructing it. This is why the eyes of our mind become open. Then we have a thousand hands, a thousand eyes. We only have two eyes, and then we can only see in front of us. But the Buddha can see behind also. There's an ancient Zen master that said, hearing through the ears, seeing through the eyes. Seeing behind. The eyes are in front, but you can see behind. Then all ten directions become opened. In other words, we see via our mind. But our thinking that we can only see through our two eyes, this is again because of our attachment. If you do Zen practice well, your six senses become empty. Then you sit quietly, you can go beyond time and see. And 
There is no you or I. 또 자연과 나가 없다. There is no me and nature. 또 죽고 사는 것이 없다. There is no life or death. 그러면서 그, 그 스스로 일어났다 스스로 없어진다. Yet at the same time, things appear spontaneously and disappear spontaneously. 네, 스스로 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 나무가 풀렸다 스스로 어, 어떤 리브스가 칼라 갬발다. Things happen spontaneously. Um, plants grow spontaneously. They change color spontaneously. 산은 푸르고 물은 저 산은 푸르고 어, 산은 높고 물은 푸르다. Uh, this is why they say the mountains are green and the uh, water is blue. 그런 것이 이제 Zen 그 마스터의 쓰는 포에츠인데. This is a kind of poetry that Zen masters have written. 그래서 우리가 이제 그런 것은 하나의 literature를 그리고. These kind of things we see as literature. 어떻게 우리가 이런 부다 마인드라고 리얼리티를 사나 이 몸을 가지고. How can we uh, experience this Buddha, Buddha mind and live in the reality of the everyday world with our body? Why do we need Buddhism in these modern days? Everyone has a physical body. And this body is something that always changes. At some point, we will become old and die. 옛날 사람도 그러고 지금 사람도 그러고 미래 사람도 그런다. That was true for people in ancient times. It's true for people in the present, and will be true for people in the future. 그러나 그 변하는 가운데 진리가 있어서. But in the midst of that change, there is truth. 몸을 통해서 작용한다. And it can be expressed through our body. 그 변하는 진리는 전혀 옛날이나 지금이나 똑같다 이말 but truth is unchanging. It is the same now as it was in ancient times. Um, and truth is expressed as the great truth of impermanence. When modern day people try to go directly into Zen, it often doesn't go well. 왜냐하면 우리 그 컨셉스의 thinking habits이 굉장히 복잡하기 때문에. Because our consciousness, our thinking habits are very complex. 그래서 본업으로 재는 하려고 하면. And when we try to do Zen with that. 재는 심플하지만. Zen itself is simple. 하려는 사람이 그 복잡하게 하기 때문에. But the person trying to do it is very complex. 재는 messy가 된다 말이야. And Zen becomes messy. 그러면 재는 어려워져 버려. Then we feel that Zen is difficult. Or we feel that Buddhism is difficult. Suffering is separate and the Buddha is separate. And you can end up experiencing more suffering than you did before you ever knew anything about Buddhism. Because when you study Buddhism, you come to understand the principle of cause and effect. And because you come to believe in the truth of the Buddha. If you do not have awakening and only have faith, then you can experience suffering. There are many monks also who, after many years of practice, experience great suffering. People who do not know anything about the truth of Buddhism can make mistakes easily and quickly forget them. They have an easygoing attitude. But their karma continually gets heavier. Their wisdom does not appear. But in Buddhism, you may experience a little suffering, but you can awaken. And the belief you have in the Buddha, because you believe in the principle of cause and effect, you then make efforts to create good causes. So that it creates good effects. 
because if you create bad causes, it will produce bad effects. And through that, then we don't continually create new karma. But but doing that is not enough. Whether we, if we believe in Buddhism, cause and effect are there. Even if we don't believe in Buddhism, cause and effect are still there. Because it is a universal principle. Um, a cause is being born, and a result of that cause is that we will die. If we haven't been born, then there is nothing to die. How can we transcend cause and effect? If we become aware of impermanence, that all things change, because they change, we don't hold on to them. So they can just pass us by. And then all that remains within you is that mysterious truth. And suffering disappears. In the beginning, it's good to observe this. And gradually, your energy and your mind will start to settle down. And then your Zen practice will naturally go well. But if you don't uh, truly believe in the principle of change, even if you achieve a high level of Zen, you will immediately become attached to that. And as soon as you become attached to that level, trouble will come. Because all things change. Even if awakening appears, it is not something to become attached to. But from moment to moment, there is nothing that we need to cling to. So, through this, we can also let go of our body. Then our blood will spontaneously circulate. Every month our nails will grow and we'll have to clip them. Our hands will spontaneously move. And our feet can naturally walk. If we're hungry, then we'll eat. If we're tired, then we'll sleep. In other words, we can follow along with our body. This is different from fighting with our body or trying to go against our body. We become more tolerant and our mind has uh, more space, more flexibility. Even death is something that this body can then accept that way. If we eat ice cream, it's sweet and good. But the kind of um, happiness that we can experience when our attachment is letting go is much greater. When we have been attached to our body, but through observation, we let go of that attachment, as that attachment lets go, there is great joy there. And uh, blessings will arise. 
The disappearance of suffering is referred to in Buddhism as nirvana. And nirvana is that place where there is no death. <coughs> When form appears and then disappears, that disappearance is death. Um, when our body is born and then at some point we no longer breathe, that is death. But it's just when we can see it, it's a body. Beyond the body, there is truth. And that truth is not form. It doesn't stay in any one place. But it functions through the form. If you can awaken to that, then you will come to see that this body does not belong to you. You have to think of your body as something that you are renting for this life. And you can very lightly um, let go of it with your mind. So let's more correctly understand this word impermanence. It's something that you can't understand intellectually. You can only know it through your awareness. The reason why our intellect is part of the functioning of our body. The intellect comes from the brain. If you were to cut off your head, you couldn't use your head anymore. It's a part of the body. But our truth is not just located in our brain. Our brain is one of the functionings of the expression of truth. Without a doubt, our body has truth. But because it is not form, we can't see it. Because it has no color, we can't see it. Because it is not large or small, we also can't calculate it in any way. The more you try to get close to it, the more you cannot. <laughs> And the further away you try to run from it, you can't. At the same time, it exists. And this is why they say it is mysterious. This is the character of our Buddha nature. It is the character of truth. It is the character of Zen. Only then can we correctly understand impermanence. In the beginning, just look at your fingernails. Without a doubt, your fingernails grow. And yet you can't actually see the growth. And yet just because you can't see it growing doesn't mean that it doesn't grow. Because we have evidence. Every one month, two months, we have to cut. With that evidence, we know without a doubt the nails grow. So now I can't see it. I can't see that change. Ah, my effort to try and see it is a mistake. So you have to give up on that effort to try and see it. And you don't just give up on it um, in your mind. Then you realize that that habit you have, the habit itself of trying to see it, is a mistake. <coughs> And as soon as you have that realization, then you know the impermanence of your body. So where is I? Who is 
Who is the fellow trying to find this eye? Even the fellow trying to find it will change. Because there isn't anything that doesn't change. So instead of trying to approach it with your thinking, just simply be aware. And then right in front of your eyes, truth will be revealed. Your Zen mind will be revealed. And the Buddha will be revealed. At that point, then you will be free from both your body and your mind. This is how Buddhism can become close to our everyday life. So we should remember the closer we try to get to truth, um, the less we can succeed. And trying to get close to it is a kind of useless effort. The further you try to get away from it, the less you can do that. So what will you do? <coughs> then automatically you will do Zen. Because your thinking is cut off. And because your thinking is cut off, Zen appears. Then these eyes can go deeply into your mind. Then even as you live in the everyday world, you can do so without attachment. Just this morning, I given a lecture nine o'clock in Bilbure Marriott Hotel. Earlier this morning, I gave a lecture um, at the Marriott Hotel in Milbury. It was a busy morning. It looks like a busy morning. But when I look at myself, I didn't give any lecture. I'm just here. And when I look at myself here, I don't know where I am. I'm just somewhere. I obviously exist. But I can't see myself. But I obviously exist. That is awareness. And through that, attachment disappears. Um, this, um, attachment won't disappear by knowing it. Because our or nature. Because we have truth, um, we follow along with truth. So, under that truth, the truth in Milbray, the truth here, the farm was there and now is here. But the truth was not there nor here. It moves around with this body. And in seeing it that way, the attachment disappears. So even though it was a busy morning, it's not a busy morning. It becomes very obvious. So when you first enter this practice, um, try to be very honest and don't use the intellect. If you use your thinking, then you cannot have that awareness. And when your thinking comes up, then you can say to yourself, well, this is something I've had many experiences of many times in my life. I just have to think of it. It's not important. Those thoughts that are coming up are not just coming up this morning. They've been coming up all the time. It's something that always changes, so why do you want to hold it in your head? 
If you can think that way, then your thoughts will disappear. But if you sit on your cushion and think, Oh my goodness, I have so many complicated thoughts here. I'm supposed to be doing meditation. What am I going to do with it? Then it'll just get worse. Sometimes your mind will become quiet. This morning my meditation was very good. And you think, oh, this morning my meditation was very good. That may be good in that moment, but then immediately it will be followed by struggles. Our habit is such that when we have silence, we become attached to that, and when we have struggles, we become attached to that. Both, both wrong. Both are wrong. It's not struggles, nor is it silence. But it can become silence, and it can become struggles. Our life can become busy, it can become quiet. But our truth itself never has any great change. According to condition, according to situation, according to environment, it functions according to the conditions, the situation, the environment. It's like when it's cold, you put on more clothes, and when it's hot, you take them off. When you're hungry, you'll eat food, and when you're tired, you'll rest. And yet, you do those things without any doing. So there is no attachment. All beings are like this. I am like this, you are like that. All creatures are like this. But the greater our attachment is, the lower a sentient being we become. Someone who has less attachment and is purer then can achieve higher levels of being. So that's where the difference is between great suffering and less suffering. Buddhism um, appeared to help us find a solution to the problems of life. And Shakyamuni Buddha was the first to see this. So he was our first great teacher. And if we look at his teachings, he said all things change. In those days, he didn't particularly teach Zen. It's these days, in more modern times, that Zen appeared. In those days, they didn't talk about Zen. Change. Our fingernails change. Our thinking change. Changes. If our, it's not good for our fingernails to get too long. We have to cut them. And it's also not necessary to have too much thinking. The only time you need to think is when you're hungry, you think, oh, I should eat. And you just need that thought for that moment. You don't need to keep thinking about it. But our habit is such to constantly keep thinking about it. As a result, we get old more quickly and we have more stress. So you can look at this and say, this is something that changes. And have that awareness. And let's not think of it as being complicated. Because even that thought that it's complicated will also change. Let's just let go of this and that. As a result, then you will become free from duality. Then even when you sit, you can sit with truth. Even when you walk, you can walk with truth. 
Even when you sleep, you can sleep with truth. You can slip, go to bed under the palanquin, you enter the palanquin with truth. Because we are not that good, we are always going to be truth. And the only reason we don't do that is because we keep um, falling away from truth. Even though that truth is there within you, your thinking has joined up with your illusion. And you take something that changes and try to um, think that it won't change. And that's what you awaken to. Awakening is not something appearing. It's a matter of realizing your wrong habits. Most of our habits are wrong habits. Because we try to stubbornly insist that something that changes is not going to change. So in Buddhism they say our thinking is upside down. In ancient times there was a great Zen master named Joju. His teacher was Nam Jansinida. And his teacher was uh, called Master Nam Jan. Several hundred monks practiced under that great master. So there was a building to the south, and then there was the Zen Hall to the north. Oh, there were two Zen Halls. There was also a cat living there. And when the monks had free time, they would spend time with the cat and thought it was cute. But each Zen Hall thought the cat belonged to them, and each would try to keep it in their place. And the monks started fighting over the cat. They argued, oh, that cat belongs to this That cat is to the other. <laughs> they were fighting. When the teacher looked, he saw they weren't practicing, they were fighting. <laughs> Obviously, there was no one there doing correct sin. <laughs> so the Namjung master held up the cat and said, One person say one correct word. Then the cat will live. Otherwise, I'll cut off its head. Because they were fighting over the cat, if there was no cat, there'd be no fighting. Say one word. Nobody said a word. People doing correct sin will not fight. What does it matter whether the cat is in the South Hall or the North Hall? Obviously, you'd see that fighting, there was no one doing correct Zen. Say one word. Not one monk answered. So he took the knife and killed the cat. And shortly after that, his greatest disciple, Joju, had been at the market, and he returned from the market. And he heard the story. And so his teacher said, what would you have said to save the cat? He, said, he didn't say a word, but he picked up his shoe and put it on top of his head and went out. <laughs> said, if you had just been here, the cat would have lived. <laughs> so if you think about it, why would he put the shoe on his head? 
거기에 바로 이제 딥 미닝이 있다. There is a deep meaning there. 이게 이제 공안이네요. And this is a koan. 그런 것을 지금 저는 모더나이즈 해서 설명하는 거예요. I've modernized it a little to explain it to you. Because yeah. I think we can question and answer. Yeah. It's something that people can't understand. Shoes are for your feet. Why would he put it on your head, on his head? That's what you have to awaken to. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm looking back, you know, 30 years ago, at the beginning times and practice at the moment, when I look back at myself and my practice back when I first started, I thought of Zen as being so difficult. But when I think back on it now, I realize it was just because I was approaching Zen incorrectly. If I had just realized that all things change, then it would have been much easier, but instead I just tried to keep going forward with the way I was practicing. Try to obtain awakening. That's a big mistake. Try to obtain awakening. Big mistake. So you have to realize when you have that kind of thinking and let go of it. Very close to your place, 굉장히 가까운 곳에서 impermanent principle를 깨달을 수 있어요. Then you can awaken to this principle of impermanence in a place that is very close to you. 그럼 모든 것이 Zen, 모든 것이 practice가 되는 거예요. Then all things become your Zen practice. 그래서 이제 집착이 없이 사는 것이지. And that's why you can then live without attachment. Because I am Zen student, I am Zen monk. I don't, I want not attachment, attachment, you know. Even this is bothering my Zen, so it's just throw away. I'm bothering my money is maybe stimulation my, you know, greed so throw away. 그런 망크도 있어요. There are many monks who do that, try to throw everything away. 그런데 그거는 이제 무슨 like 디타치먼트지만 리얼이 아니에요. It may look like attachment, detachment, but it's not real detachment. 그래서 돈을 가지고 있어도 돈을 모른다. Even though you have money, you just don't know your money. 그래가지고. 집착 없이 돈을 쓰면 모든 사람을 좋게 쓸 수가 있는 겁니다. If you can use your money without attachment, then you can use it to help many people. 이 불교의 진리라는 것은 굉장히 중요한 거예요. The truth, the truth in Buddhism is extremely important. 아주 그 아우 생활하고 굉장히 가까운 것이다. It's something that is very close to our everyday life. 그리고 진리하고 떨어져 있잖아요 우리 생활에. And it's not our everyday life is not separate from truth. That's why ancient must say, even though you want to run away from truth, you cannot run away because you are truth. When you run away from your shadow, the 그림자를 그림자를 벗어 도망갈라 하지만 가면 간대로 따라오잖아요. You may try to run away from your shadow, but it follows you everywhere you go. If you go fast, it will go fast. 진리가 항상 같이 하는 거예요. Truth is always with you in the same way. But it's just because you haven't awoken to it and you're searching for it somewhere else. This is why you think it is close or far away. You can't see truth with your eyes. So put to rest the idea that you're going to try and see it. And then just have awareness. Then you can see it with it. Buddha means free from anxiety, illusion, limitation, time. Okay. And the question you have. Okay.
그 어떤 것을 그 impermanence 알면서 계속 집착할 수 있느냐고요. 그러안 하죠. 바로 알면 집착 안 되죠. If your understanding of the impermanence of it is correct, the attachment disappears. If you realize automatic, uh, if you realize the correct of impermanence, automatically silence the other side. If you really have correct realization of the impermanence, then automatically you become silent. Your eyes are deep. Your eyes automatically connect deep within you. 여러분이 진리가 대화한 거예요, 저절로. 모먼트. Then in that moment, uh, you, any one of you can become that truth. That means you are come back to your hometown, 고향으로 돌아가 봤다. It it's referred to as saying you return back to your hometown. 그래서 뭐 사일런스 할 필요 없이 그냥 사일런스. So then it's just silence without having to be silence. 그러고 사일런스 안 하고 싶으면 안할 수가 있는 것이죠. 막 액티비티 한다 이 말은. If you don't want to be silent, you can also be very active. 왜냐면 그럴 때도 진리가 있기 때문에. Because truth is there too. 노래 부를 때도 진리가 있다. 노래 부를 때도. Even when you sing a song, there is truth there. With a song in my heart, <laughs> I behold the adorable face. Just a song at the start. <laughs> Even then, truth is with you. <laughs> so there is no distinction. And actually, if I sing like this, without them, I am very shy. I couldn't sing like this. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But with the Zen, I don't feel any shy. <laughs> Because I don't feel distance, truth, and singing, same. Yeah. The reason why I'm learning singing, you know, because uh, I'm lec- I, when I lecture, uh, through the singing, people like approach more closely. Too much think, too much, you know, modern people, Zen is typical. So singing is my very ordinary. So, in, with a song in my heart, there is one or two words, behold, I like to behold the word. Behold your adorable face. Behold your adorable face. Thank you for listening to the Gay Buddhist Forum. If you would like to hear several new talks per month and be notified of upcoming speakers so you can participate live, please subscribe to this podcast, like us on Facebook, and join our mailing list by visiting gaybuddhist.org.